welcome to the Group X podcast. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you too. <laughs> hey, um, let's kick it off right from the word go. Can you give us a bit of a rundown on you, who you are and how you got into the fitness industry? Sure thing. Well, uh, my background's actually been in dancing all of my life. Uh, and I was lucky enough to have dancing take me to the other side of the world. And I danced at the Moulin Rouge in Paris for around... Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, for eight years. So, yeah, my sights were set on dance uh, the whole time. I used to teach dancing as well. Everything was about dance. And then I lived in Paris and was kicking my legs over there. Uh, but for any dancer, the career is quite short and it comes to an end. And um, I kind of had that moment of being a bit lost of where to go next. And um, uh, at that particular time, I was having a bit of... Uh, the dance industry has a lot of pressure on it. So I was finding for mental health wise, it was um, like a difficult industry for me to be in. Like it really was a challenge. Uh, yep. So I was a bit lost after dancing, not sure where to go, but the where I found my greatest happiness and where I felt my best was when I did a group fitness class at the gym. <laughs> and <Love it>. so <laughs> I had a lot going on, but always whenever I went to class, I would just, all of that would disappear and I'd feel the best that I felt in my day in that 55 minute class with great music and great instructor and all that kind of thing. And one day I happened to be at the gym and uh, an Italian girl approached me and she's like, oh, you're going to do the instructor course, aren't you? And I was like, me? French? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't think I can. But anyway, there turns out that there's these great opportunities to study in France uh, for it to be economical so the government will support study. And uh, wow. I ended up um, finding my way into doing a full-blown fitness diploma in French, <laughs> uh, which took me 13 months. It was very in-depth course. Sure. Yeah, from day one, I was teaching freestyle fitness in French. Uh, with a very intermediate level of French. <laughs> wow, that's um, awesome but, to hear. <laughs> but as soon as I started that uh, course, like I knew that I'd found my thing as well. Yep. Like I had so much joy and love and giving back in that group fitness uh, place. And although I trained to do personal training as well, I just always felt my heart was with the group fitness and yep. the relationship with music, especially having the background in dancing. Um, and the gym that I was working with and doing my traineeship with and continuing to work with, uh, were trying to be the most innovative in France at the time. And they actually went to the United States looking for a program that no one else had something completely yep. different. And they trialed and tested a lot of different things in, in the U S and they came back with pound. <laughs> wow. Uh, at the time I had begun teaching Les Mills as well as uh, freestyle classes. And um, I pretty much got told that, Di, you're gonna be teaching pound. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> I'm gonna be Say what now? What? <laughs> And I think I watched a few YouTube videos because like, you know, uh, there wasn't so much outreach on social media at that time. And yep. I, j I was a little bit puzzled, to be honest. I was like, this program's about drumming and fitness and I don't know about it. Like typical me that's a little bit skeptical to begin with, like, I'm not sure. But hey, yep. I got put into the training and there is a saying that goes with pound of it was love at first strike. And that's yep. uh, literally what it was. As soon as I started hitting uh, the sticks together, all of a sudden I was in love with this program. Um, and that was the first time it appeared in Europe was that training yep. I did. It escalated quite quickly and grew quite quickly. Uh, so I auditioned to be a trainer and presenter for the program and was successful. That was about nine years ago now, eight or nine Congratulations. years ago. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And then um, I moved back to Australia seven or so years ago with a mission to be making more uh, making noise in the land down under. And um, 
Excellent. I, I love hearing that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I'm constantly trying to share pound with the communities out there and training new instructors. Um, so I'm still trainer and presenter for pound and yep. I'm a group fitness manager at good life health club as well. Cool. And, yep. uh, teaching yoga and uh, body jam, mills, pound, reformer Pilates, lots of cool different things. So, so how long have you been, would you say you've been in the fitness industry for then? Can you give us a time frame of years? Uh, officially, like from when I did my diploma, it's 10 years. Okay. Um, yep. But I did start teaching Zumba a, f a couple of years before that. So before that. count yep. that like 12 years. <laughs> yep. Mate, that's, I, I love you. And I, yeah. Everyone's got a backstory and everyone's backstory is unique on how they get into the industry. And to me, I, I've had some people say to me, oh, Tone, cutting it out of your podcast. I'm like, you know what? No, because it's about people. It's about us in the industry and it's about, you know, everyone has their journey and their experience on how they got into it and how they fell in love with what we do. I love hearing those stories and I, I especially love the fact that you, back in Moulin Rouge, now that to me blows my mind. I think that is fan bloody tastic because the dedication there is for something like that far exceeds anything I think my brain has ever gone into. So, you know, I, I, while I, while I don't mean it to sound like a sarcastic thing when I say it, I think it's fantastic because you, the dedication that you went through, the understanding you've got to have for something that's on that scale shows, shows respect for you, for yourself, for everything that you do. So, you know, thank you for doing that. So then jumping into the fitness industry and bringing that across with you, because that's, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, it's... can you share, if you don't mind, can you share a little bit of experiences about when you were doing that? You know, give us a, uh, an example, if you can, of one of the best nights you had up on stage with Moulin Rouge. Oh, like every night on stage was the best night. Like I, I, I always chose dancing over everything in my life. When I was younger, over anything, over school, over yep. hanging out with my friends. Um, yep. Even when I was younger, I was put. I had to make choices: am I going to do athletics or dancing? And dancing just always came first um, yeah. because it just connected with my heart and my soul so much. I, I didn't even have to think about why I loved it. I just, I just did, and it yep. is like that for lots of dancers. And being in the Moulin Rouge, like the show is very prestigious. Like the costumes we wear are extravagant and absolutely stunning. And uh, we dance the Can Can, which is like a one of the, it's the most famous dance in the world. So yep. it's like you're really a part of something historical when you're dancing in the Moulin Rouge. And every night on stage is like, um, it, I, you probably, you know, heard of the performers high. So you get on yep. stage and the crowd is there and the lights are shining and it's kind of a euphoric feeling to perform. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in saying that, it also has the other side of it. So for me personally, while it was very a dream life on the stage, off stage, um, I allowed there to be a lot of pressure on me. And um, yeah, I didn't yep. do too well with my mental health, but that part of my story is so important for what I do now. Like yeah. it uh, yep. really drives me with a great deal of purpose in teaching and especially with a program like Pound, uh, yep. which has such emphasis on what goes on in the mind as well as the body. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for opening up and sharing that with us and with your audience. You know, that's <laughs> it's a, it can be sometimes a very big thing to actually open up about, but I, I can see it in your eyes and see it, you know, hear it in your voice when you're talking about it, that it's made an impact on you, but it's also, uh, it sounds like a good thing that's led you to where you are now to actually understand it and be able to share. Uh, yeah, I'm grateful for the, the experience I had. I wouldn't change a thing, the good yeah. and the bad of it, um, because yep. yeah, I, it has great meaning for what I do now. This is the Group X Podcast. Now, talk to us about learning a, a fitness diploma. Was it a diploma degree? Uh, diploma. Diploma in a foreign language. <laughs> in a language that's not your first language. Now, there's, there's challenges there straight away of, uh, hello, what now? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, uh, lit I was at a point in my life where if I – it was – 
either I was successful in doing this course uh, yeah. or I had to move back to Australia and I wouldn't know what to do with my life, you know, with no direction. Um, but the way it works in France is a bit different to here. So if you want to study fitness in France, you have to pass fitness examinations uh, which are put on by the state or by France, by the country. It's a little yep. bit like uh, trying to get into the army. So, wow. <laughs> like, no, I'm kidding. Like, we had three days of fitness testing, lifting heavy weights, and also doing group fitness classes, instructing awesome. all different points. And it's like, if you fail any part, you're out and you'll have to you're try again next year. So everyone who's there is very, very passionate about fitness for themselves as well as teaching it. Uh, it's high pressure. Gosh, <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, I managed to get through all the fitness tests and- um, Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and then it was 13 months, uh, not allowed to teach anything choreographed, only freestyle. And um, you teach from your first day. So I did 20 hours of study a week and 15 hours working in the gym. Uh, with group fitness, personal training, and just general gym floor. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was really hard because everyone that I, everyone was French that I worked with, even though they spoke English, it had been made clear, do not speak English to Diane. <laughs> like, oh, uh, wow. Help me with my French because my French was, yeah. I, I could understand a lot, but for speaking, it was pretty so-so. And yep. uh I, when I taught my first classes, I'd have to make a script uh, in French of how to teach, um, to... yeah, what the muscles were in and how to say squeeze them and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the first four months, I physically had headaches. I was like, I'm never going to study again. Like, it was so hard. And then it's literally like something went like that and I didn't even notice uh, a colleague said to me die your French has gotten really good and I was like yep. hang on a sec yeah it has <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it just became easy to speak French out of nowhere and the funny thing is uh, when I came back to Australia I found it difficult to teach I auditioned to teach body pump in a, in a gym and I found it difficult to teach in English. Like, no way. What is it? I kept slipping into French. Into French, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's completely transformed my, your brain. I learned all my fitness in French. I All my Les Mills trainings in French, pound training, everything in French. Oh, wow. So instead of, yeah, that's, I love that. Part. Our brains can actually just switch at one point and just, as you said, just go, yeah, look, I'm, um, yeah, I can do this now. This is easy. Yeah, but then come, exactly. I think that's great that it coming back that, that it took a bit to actually turn the Aussie back on and yeah. turn the French off. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, but that's fantastic. That's those, those stories are, as I said before, unique, but also, um, when you look at them, they're, they're, they're challenges. They're not, it's not an easy thing to, one, learn, learn a complete different language, but also then go and do a, a diploma in, in a different language as well. But the thing that I do love about different countries that the government, as you said, the government, so these are the prerequisites you actually have to do before getting into fitness. I'd love for Australia, now there'd probably be people out there that are going to hate me for saying this, but I think that something like that should be implemented here because I don't believe that the, the level of Cert 3 and level of Cert 4 are high enough. You know, that's just me. I'm not saying that everyone needs to agree with me, but I think that having something like that here where you've actually got to make sure that it is a level and a standard yeah. that is so high... Um, I think it's only, going to, it's only got to improve what's going on, you know. It can only improve. It can't make anything worse. Yeah, well, it, it was means. amazing to study with, like, we were three groups of 20 all in yep. this uh, one institute and uh, to be studying alongside people who were so passionate and wanted it so bad and were trying to better themselves all the time. Like, we, we yeah. would have training sessions together, like, if we were doing our personal training classes and learning methods of training, we would yep. be in the gym, like doing mini competitions. And it was very motivating the whole, whole time. Yeah. yeah. And they also do wow. both. Like it's very normal in yep. France. 
even if you want to be a PT, to follow the rotor group fitness as well. So yep. it's nice to have that uh, broad spectrum. Mm. That's something that I've been talking to a lot of people about more and more recently with regards to um, how PTs can actually get into group Group X and how Group X guys can get into PT. I mean, when I first started back in 2002, 2003, uh, I'd been teaching classes but then decided to do PT as well. And majority of my clients that I picked up from PT were from my classes. So to me, it was, well, it was fitness first back then and I was getting triple packs and, you know, you're converting all them and doing all that kind of stuff as you did back in those days. Yeah. Um, I still managed to get most of my clientele from my, either my pump class or, or my, um, my boxing class or my RPM or cycle classes because they were just there in front of you. Oh, Tony, do you do on PT? Yes, I am. Oh, cool. Can we do some sessions? Yeah, fantastic. I'd always say to the PTs, guys, you need to get in and start teaching classes because... If you're standing there on the gym floor expecting someone to walk up to you just because you're a PT, you know what? It's probably not going to work. But if you are in front of a group of people, you're in front of 10, 15, 20, 30 people, however many people it can be, and you're explaining stuff to them and they're connecting with you, you can actually pick up clients quite easily. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely. the easiest place to find. It's, it's your biggest fishing ball right there in front of you. So yeah. and I think that's uh, what I still think there is here in Australia is there's a big divide between PT and Group X. It's almost some of the PTs are threatened to actually put their clients into a group exercise class thinking that, oh, well, if they go there, they're not going to come and see me. Yeah. I, well, I don't yeah. agree with that. I think it's an added, you know what, if you're a PT, you're a good PT, they're going to come and see you one, maybe two times a week, depending on what you're charging and how much, you know, disposable income they actually have. But if you're just prescribing a program for them, but also prescribing group exercise classes. Yeah that client's going to get more out of it and see benefit in coming to see you because your expertise in what you're actually prescribing them is yeah. a whole lot. So, I feel like that's yeah, I think, why I was brought up in fitness for it to be yep. that way because that's what was happening overseas for me. So when I came yeah. back here and I felt the separation, I was really like, whoa, well, this is a whole new experience. <laughs> yep. But, I yep. mean, the whole time I've been here at various times, I do get people ask me, um, do you PT? Yep. I'm like, no. Are you doing PT at the moment? <laughs> Pardon? Are you doing any PT at the moment? No. no. No, I didn't. I've really followed the group fitness road, but yeah. yep. Uh, yep. it's more m me to, I feel like I work well with groups of people. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Sometimes some, so, I've done some programs which have been more small group training, and I really enjoy that. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, but not. The one on one hasn't been my business venture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, you mentioned earlier as well that you're actually doing uh, your with Group X manager at Good Life. Yes, Good Life. Yep. How long have you been? Sports. How long have you been there for? Uh, in this particular club, uh, just over two years. Okay. Prior, prior and how do you? I was in another one as a manager, okay, so... but teaching, I've been teaching there for uh, since I got back from France. So it's okay. over seven years now. Yeah. For the, the Group X manager role itself, are there, if I can ask you this, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to, what do you enjoy most about the Group X manager role? Oh, uh, there's a few things. Like, I really, I love working with people, but I like to, I like, uh, to for people to realise their potential. And I mean that not just as an instructor to be in front of my group of members that they've got to realize their potential, but also my instructor team. So if I can find ways to kind of keep them really excited or motivated, I'm, I'm always trying to think of new ideas of what events we can run or how we can get a bit yeah. more innovative and different um, because I do think innovation is important uh, for keeping that inspired spirit alive um totally. but yeah i look to my team and i guess see okay how can i make it better for them yep yeah. brilliant now on the other end of the spectrum what is it that you don't like about group x management <laughs> <laughs> i've put it on the spot here people <laughs> so tony can we mute this one out can we do it again <laughs> No, and the reason I ask it is that, is that I think in any job, any job that we do, any role that we have within the fitness industry, there are going to be things that we love and the things that we won't, won't say hate, but things that we find a challenge and things that we're like, you know what, it bugs me. If this could be changed, then it'd be a hell of a lot better. 
Do you come yeah. across anything like that? And there can be nothing. If oh, there is nothing, that's... No, I mean, those those things exist, of course, when you work in a, in a big company because, you know, I always have ideas, but I can't always put my ideas into play because, you know, you have to kind of go with what the company wants. So those yep. kind of things yep. are where I've got to find a balance of like, okay, well, how can I do something that will work? <laughs> yep. Um, yep. Look, but otherwise, like administration work, I mean, it's not my favourite, but yep. I don't find it too challenging so i don't mind doing it <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 no i appreciate that there's the, to me the the um group exercise manager's role is is probably one of the most underrated um misunderstood roles that i think our industry has you know i think if group exercise managers are given the tools to do their pro job properly and given the the time the expertise the knowledge everything to do it properly. I think group exercise as a whole would actually improve. And that's not to say that group exercise managers out there are dumb and, and don't have these skills. There's a lot of them that don't from my experience and from my travels around Australia, meeting clubs and chatting to clubs when with Les Mills and also now with body bike stuff. Um, I think that a lot of group X managers ha are in the roles that they're in because they are the best instructor on a timetable. Um, and I'm not saying this is everybody, yeah. This is just, just predominantly where it's come from historically. Oh, you're the best instructor, yeah, you jump in there and you can do it. And while that's great, and that, that instructor has got a lot of skills that they can use, as we know, you know, finding class covers, updating a timetable, doing the pays, should be things that are done almost back end. You know, stuff that's done in a system that you shouldn't have to worry about as a Group X manager. I like the fact that you mentioned that you want to do stuff on, for thinking of ways to do stuff with your team to grow them as individuals, to work with them to grow them as individuals, but also for your members as well so they can find themselves. I think that's key for Group X managers to to understand there's more to your job than counting I numbers. I think it's the, one of the most important parts of the role is being involved in with the community that's in front of you, in, in the instructors as well as as the gym members, and uh, creating the, the the culture, like the yeah. like this strong community. Because you know, you want to. I like to know who they all are. So, like, yep. I, my office is right near like where the group classes are, and when I can hear the hustle bustle of <laughs> the class ending, I'll just pop out of my office and stand there. Yep. I'm like, who can yep. I say hello to today? Um, yeah. It's like when they're feeling more connection with even management and the members and as well as the instructors, the instructors, I know when I was just an instructor, I never saw my group fitness manager ever. They were an enigma. I just came from my class and I left. So yeah. it, yeah. it's, I, I don't know, when you create that family feeling, the whole yep. culture in the club changes. Um, 100%. Yeah, yeah, but that comes down to the person and whether they like have the drive and the want to do that, I guess. But yeah. I, I yeah. do personally. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and that's that's really nice to hear. And I think you, you you've nailed what I was trying to get there as well. That the, if it if it's led properly from the group X manager, it filters through. Yeah. yeah. The fact that the fact that you get up and get out there, there's I know there's a hell of a lot of group X managers and like I'm not doing that. I used to stand at reception and swipe people in. You know, have a whole lot of fun. Get to know these people and say to them, if I saw him walking to the gym floor, hey, what are you doing? No, 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 no. Group X is down this way. Oh, and just be but... cheeky about it. But, <laughs> but to me, it was the way of actually, everyone in that club knew who I was. Oh, it's yeah. tone, yeah, right. Yeah. But, but it worked because then if there was ever a new person that came in to group exercise or were asking questions, go and have a chat to Tone. He knows what's going on. It's what I needed to do to make sure that that department, that team was actually working to its best, yeah. but also the, the instructors that were there as well, uh, while the team was built well before I came on board from some experts in the industry, I managed to actually still nurture them with my skill set that I had to make sure that they were doing the best they could for our members and, and getting group exercise to be on point. Because if it's not, it's not, you know? Yeah. It's, and yeah. If, they, if they see you there as the manager and you, you know, you're poking your eye and having a look and waving, uh, they feel supported. I think they do. <laughs> I hope they do. No, it's true. Yeah, yeah, so it's true. then they they get excited to come and teach at this place where they're supported and it feels like a family. Yes. And 
And then yeah. their classes are going to be even better and the member experience is even better. It all, like you said, it's this ripple effect that trickles down uh, yeah. and everyone's just having a good time. <laughs> this is the Group X Podcast. So it leads me to how did how did you get into Pound? You, know, you 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 touched on a little bit at the beginning when we were chatting about it, but give us a bit more understanding on how that opportunity came up, um, and then I'm going to ask you about what is Pound. So start with how the opportunity came up for you first, if you can. Yeah. So as I mentioned, I so I was already um, graduated, had my diploma, and working full time in group fitness in Paris, in France. And in the largest gym chain uh, over there. And yeah, they went seeking this, uh, a program that no one else had. And they came back with Pound. And the talk immediately was, well, Di will teach it because she's a dancer. (laughs) And I have to say in this moment right now, Pound is not a dance program. Yep. (laughs) But um, because of the relationship with music, it's viewed as being good for dancers. The particular gym they wanted to put it in was one of their more fancy ones. And um, group fitness wasn't the strongest uh, thing in that particular gym. It was gym floor. And uh, the team that worked there was a lot of males and a lot of really strong, bulky guys. PTs and uh, group instructors and I was like oh well what if I don't like pound and I don't want to teach it (laughs) they were like one of the boys they were like can you seriously see the boys teaching it and then I was like okay I'll do it (laughs) and I did go with a bit of like I really didn't know what I was getting into I didn't like I don't know I I didn't watch a lot of videos I watched one and I was like oh I don't know if I'll like this, <laughs> yep. really questioning yep. it. But I straight away I was in training. I was in training with the creators of the program. Uh, they flew Brilliant. out from LA and I was, I kind of loved it because they're American and I'm Australian and everyone else in the room was French. So I was like, yep. oh, I feel like we've got a bit of a connection here. Connection. Yeah. <laughs> um, yep. But yeah, when we did the, you start a training with a masterclass and like when we kind of, I don't know, the, it, I see everyone's face in the class, like the eyes kind of go wide of like, what are we doing when we start yeah. eating the sticks together? <laughs> and then it's just like, whew, you just relax and you're like, oh my God, this feels good. Like, yeah. Yeah. so I had that moment of like it being love at first strike. And I was like, I really mm-hmm. love it. Um, when I first taught, taught my first ever class, uh, they actually invited the, some TV station. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So I got interviewed. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was quite funny that they wanted to interview the Australian girl on French TV. Said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With my French. Anyway, um, yeah, we had um, some of the upper management from the gym that watched the class and one of the gentlemen, he came up to me at the end and he was like, Diane, (laughs) Diane, it's like they created this program for you. And that was the moment that I went, oh, I was like, yeah, I feel really good. (laughs) It was like this whole light bulb moment of how good I felt when I'd been teaching it just then. And now after a moment, like all the endorphins have been running through my body and I just felt light and free and happy. And I was like, yeah, I love this. And since then I haven't looked back and the program has like, it's just been a life changer. The, the opportunities that have come my way through teaching pound. And I see exactly the same thing happen for instructor instructors that I've nurtured and trained, uh, you know, developing a new career path, but also the level of confidence that comes out in people through this program is just amazing. Right time, right place, right program. Yeah, it all there were there are no mistakes in this life. It all happened yep. as it was supposed yeah, to. Yeah, so true. Uh, <laughs> and it, if I continue like the story of becoming a trainer, uh, basically Pound started just in LA, and then this interest came from France and the UK. 
yep. when that happened, it exploded in the USA and they couldn't keep up with trainings. And uh, so they put, they were like, we can't fly out to Europe all the time. So yep. we need to get some trainers in Europe. So I did the first ever trainer audition. Uh, it was in London. And that was yep. a, another thing with, there's a, a French trainer named Florian and <laughs> we went together, but we were both like, do we go? Because it was last minute. The Eurostar tickets were like 400 euros, which is astro astronomical for Eurostar. Yes. Yep. And we were like, do we do it? Do we do it? And then we were like, oh, let's just go. <laughs> and I, I'm just so grateful that we did. Yeah. So yep. we did that. Um, Audition was successful. I taught my first trainings in uh, France and Italy, and then I moved home to Australia. Yeah. Love it. So ha was, was Pound already here in Australia before you came, or did you bring it to Australia? I thought it wasn't <laughs> because there was no Pound in Queensland, that's for sure. Yep. Um, yep. But what I learned when I arrived home is that it had been in crunch fitness for okay. quite a few years. So yep. Kirsten Potenza, who is uh, the current CEO, and she's the creator of Pound, she came out uh, 10 years ago and uh, trained up a bunch of uh, instructors and they had classes across most crunch gyms and they still do yep. have Pound running in crunch in Sydney yep. and Melbourne. Yeah. Yep. But that's kind of the only place it was. So when I came yep. back to Queensland... Yep. Um, I was like putting out there, come to pound. And everyone's like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So tell us now from a dummy that I am, explain to me what is pound? What will I experience going to a pound class? Yeah. So pound is a full body cardio jam session. It's a bit like a, uh, not just a workout, it's a bit like a fitness rock concert. So we're working with the, both the body and the mind. The foundation of the movements really comes from Pilates and yoga. So the workout's quite okay. grounded. It's low impact, unless you want to add in some plyometrics. Um, and then layered on top of that, we have this constant simulated drumming, which has come with these uh, spe specially designed exercises. <laughs> That was me dropping one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Exercise For those of you <laughs> called rip sticks. So I okay. like to say they're sticks that get you ripped. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, but this act of drumming puts this whole new element on the workout. So it's not just about your body. It incorporates the mind. Um, the drumming has brain boosting effects. So it improves your brain function. Uh, but also the massive one that I think a lot of people really benefit from is the release uh, for like stress and depression and hostility. It is literally yep. like uh, you go to a 45 minute pound class and it's like you've just been to therapy for 45 minutes. Everyone is smiling at the end. Um, I can go on. I can give you a lot of information about the drumming side of things. Uh, the effect of drumming on your brain is a little bit like meditation so it's like it has that point of focus that kind of moves you away from your thoughts and your thinking uh yeah. so you're training your brain to work differently yeah so i like this, I this as, much, add... as much information as you can about that because i when i say i don't know anything about pound all yeah. i've seen is, is what like the image that's behind you on the screen for those of you not watching but just listening there's a, a pull-up banner behind diane here that's got a, a group of group of guys doing the uh the actions that's all i've seen yeah and i've seen what i saw at the um the fitness show just recently so as much information as you can share with us i think the listeners to understand really what the workout is please yeah, so, go on with, with the... so i'll go like with the fitness side of things so the movement um the base of the movements are very simple we have only four positions that we work through and if I put them out, basically, it's like working in a wide squat, in a lunge, sitting down for core work and, and hip raises. Those are the kind of movements that we're working through. 
Um, yep. But then layered on top, we've got the drumming. And with the drumming, we work through the techniques are just patterns, but they kind of uh, will shift your body weight and they'll increase your heart rate. So basically the workout is uh, working on a cardiovascular level, but it's also strengthening the body. We do a lot of down up, a lot of squats. Yep. <laughs> um, it's uh, working flexibility, the range of motion, uh, coordination, balance, pretty much everything. Full body. So you got to get your heart rate up, well and truly. Yeah, but the magic of the program is that you don't really don't notice how hard you are working out because of these magic ripsticks uh, that we're drumming, following the beat, connecting with the music, connecting with the people that are around us. Like communal drumming is something that's been around for centuries and it is uh, known to bring about group happiness. So like people are feeling good in the class. We also use music that is um, popular, songs people know, a lot of rock music, pop music, um, things that have a great drum beat so that you can feel like you are the drummer in that band, just yeah, rocking out. Yeah. Yeah. And then all these benefits that happen at the level of your mind are the most valuable because lasting change is always at the mind. The workout, the act of drumming is empowering, it's building confidence, uh, it's releasing the stress, it's inducing more happiness, creating more self-worth. Uh, like people really feel powerful. Like they can come into a class quite timid and quite, oh, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> and then yep. after a few yep. tracks of like <laughs> hitting the floor with the ripsticks, they're like, oh yeah, I'm a rock star. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's what we're all about is people bringing out their inner rock star of being free of feeling themselves uh, and having a good time. All the fitness stuff is like this bonus that happens yeah. a little bit extra. Yeah. The other thing that is amazing about the program is that it is for everybody. So it that was, was what I was just about to ask you. Who is it designed for? Yeah, it was created to be completely inclusive of everybody, every single body out there, any yep. age, yep. any stage. The movements that we do are very easy to modify and give options to so that um, so that whoever you, you, you meet the people where they're at. Okay, so you give yep. them options and modifications that they need or they choose their own and they can still feel like they're a part of the band. It's not like they're yeah. doing something totally different. It's quite simple yeah. to modify. Uh, but I've had, I've taught classes before that had a four year old and my mum at the time, she was like 74. So like yep. you had the full awesome. range in there and everyone was rocking out together and having a good time. Yeah. yeah. I but think that's, that's so nice to hear that it's for everybody and it's not just a, a certain, you know, demographic or, or anything like that i mean there's a lot of talk these days about oh how do we you know how do we get gen z involved how do we how do we look after the baby boomers still to have a program that caters for everybody i think is is fantastic because we need we need to do it you know there's the 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 people around our age there's people that are a lot younger but if everyone if it's inclusive for everybody and everyone can get in there together and there's no age barrier whatsoever yeah. you know the young ones are cool to get in there and do it with the oldies and the oldie ones are cool to get in there and do it with the young ones i think that's that's key to to any program yeah and, and and anyone that's coming in like they're coming in for their own different reasons so i find yes. a lot of the more senior uh people that try it because this is the biggest barrier is trying the class once yes. people try it yep. they have a whole oh that yep. was really fun. <laughs> that light bulb like, moment. Yeah. Oh, that was yep. actually fun. And then the next day they're like, oh, I'm really sore. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. so, <laughs> but I find that the, uh, the seniors are more like they really appreciate and understand the benefit for their brain uh, yeah. and for the brain function and working with memory. And uh, there's a lot of science behind drumming and the effects on the brain uh, they've done studies yep. on drummers and um yeah i mean in everyday life when we're not really uh 
communicating the right and left brain like they're just hanging out yep. with this big wall in between <laughs> <laughs> uh, as soon as we do pound it's like they've got to connect and communicate so you fire neurons create new pathways the brain health improves things like decision making problem solving um, memory formal re and re formation and retrieval um, begin to improve like the brain just works faster and better so, so for years, years growing up, I was mates with guys in a band and they were always trying to tell me that the bass player was the dumb guy and the, the drummer was the guy that was the most intelligent. Now, part of me was never, never believing it. It was just like, yeah, guys, whatever, whatever. You're just all talking rubbish there. But from what you've just said, potentially the drummer could have been the smartest one in the room there from using both sides of his brain where the, the bass player was, yeah, just, just using one side. <laughs> well, there you I go. like you know, know. Yeah. behind the bass player, but hey, maybe that's yeah. it. <laughs> um, but it makes sense though, what you're saying. It completely makes sense. It's, it's uh, yeah, you, you, you're putting all the skills together that you've got to do, plus with, the, as you're saying, the, the drumming as well. You have to use both sides of your brain, don't you? It's yeah. not just the creative side. You're actually using the, the analytical side, the creative side, putting it all together to make sure that you're doing everything. And the, I can so see the benefits from from what it is yeah and it's something that like I've taught a lot of different programs before and when it comes to coordination and people have a fear of being uncoordinated it's one of the most because I teach dance stuff and I teach pound one of the most common things I hear from participants is oh but I'm not coordinated yep. but if I can encourage them enough to come and try the class this is the class where that will change and it will change yeah. within just a few classes. It Sometimes it, it happens in a few tracks. I've seen people yep. trying to figure it out for like three songs. And then by the end of the class, they're like, I'm a rock star, <laughs> like just going crazy. <laughs> and it's, I love it. And for others, it takes a little bit longer, but it really doesn't yep. take that long because yep. the techniques we use in Pound are, are quite simple. So it's a lot of patterns just crossing over using two arms, one arm. And uh, when it's brand new, of course, it's a bit like what's going on. But okay. yeah, yeah, once you've done it a few times, you're like, oh, yeah, I understand what's happening now. And it becomes easier to change. It becomes easier to move faster. So that's yep. a lot of the, um, the constant drumming is like uh, constantly working the core like uh, yep. the peripheral stabilization. So you're moving your arms yes. with, with small weights and the core has to engage um, to keep you on balance. Uh, so there is a big focus on core in pound, but it's not like you really have to focus on it. You just yep. do it and it happens. Really? So this is yeah. all a strategic yep. distraction with the, with the ripsticks uh, from yep. the actual workout. Sometimes a class can have something like, uh, I, I think the number is like 15,000 strikes of your arms. And wow. You could be doing like six, seven, eight hundred squats, depending on the choreography. Yeah. But we're never counting a rep, <laughs> ever. This is the Group X Podcast. On that, that's going to lead me to the next question. Is there, are there different formats that you need to follow? Like, is there a 30 minute format of 45 or an hour? How is so, that? Pound you know, Rockout Workout is the original program. Uh, yep. And it is straight up like a uh, pound rockout class. We have format designs of 45 minutes, 30 minutes, or even a 15 minute demo. Um, but 45 minutes is the most popular. It's that real sweet spot. The design yep. of the class works a bit like hit training. It's got intervals. Um, yep. We're moving on the floor, uh, standing up, but also peaks. Uh, due to the techniques and movements we do. It's been very thought out, trialed, tested <laughs> uh, to find that perfect design of a class that yep. has ebb and flow, both with the music and with the movement and your heart rate, the muscles that you're working. Um, yeah, it's very balanced in the end. So how many tracks would there be in a 45-minute class? Or does it vary? I should know this off the top of my head, and I'm going to say... <laughs> I've got the number 13 in my head. I might have to look at a track list and, and, and double check. But it's all good. I it's, it's, I suppose I like, on a thought, 
my question with that, and I suppose my thought process is, is it similar to like, as an example, everyone knows pump, a pump format where you've got, you know, chest tracker, biceps, lounges, you know, squats, all that kind of stuff. Is it, is that the similar sort of format? Yeah, well, we've got, parents, we've got four positions, base positions that I mentioned that we, yep. like, so we'll be standing in our set position or our lunge position, seated at our kit position, uh, yep. which is named after the drum kit, of course, yep. <laughs> or laying yep. on our back in the TNA position. So there's only four different positions. So the the flow of the class can be different depending on the instructor because we've got a few different okay. ways of structuring it. But yep. in general, it does have that flow that if you're coming regularly to class, you kind of know where you're moving oh, next. You're going to do... Yeah. You're yep. going to do yep. three standing tracks and then you're going to sit down and then you're going to come up for three standing tracks and then you're going to sit down, that kind of thing. Yep, yep, yep. cool. Yeah. That was where my brain was going, was like, okay, if I, if I rock up to, to this one class, is it completely freestyle and just, you know what, let's just get out there and, and rock it about and have no. a lot of fun or is there some format that you do follow? Yeah, as a, and as it's pre-choreographed. So the program's okay. pre-choreographed. So... Uh, you can go into different instructors' classes and if they're playing the songs you know, you'll know the, the moves. Um, the moves yeah. Uh, yep. yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Is there, I suppose with that then, you, you said there was, there's, was there three different formats? You mentioned? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yep. we have uh, three different formats now. So Pound Rock Out Workout is the original, uh, which was yep. born... I think it's uh, almost at around about 12 years ago now. Yep. Um, we've also got Generation Pound. Generation Pound's been designed for 6 to 12-year-olds. Uh, it's, cool. it's an incredible program, um, teaching kids that, all, you know, exercise can be fun and how yep. to use alternative movements, but also in the Generation Pound program they've incorporated things that kids at that age need to learn so there's activities uh because we're dealing with younger children you need to work with an yeah. attention span uh so yeah. they work through kid-friendly tracks um doing alternative movements and then move into different activities which will focus on confidence and self-esteem understanding emotions uh teamwork things like that yes. and the program can actually be uh, designed or kind of set out to work with a school curriculum. So whatever the kids are needing to learn in school at that time, it can yep. be incorporated in a Generation Pound class so that they're ticking those boxes as well. It's absolutely incredible. That's program. spot on. That, I, yeah. I, you've captivated my, my attention straight away because I've got a seven-year-old here at home. So that, that to me is a, you know what? Yeah, she, I mean, she's she's sporty and all that kind of stuff she'd want to be being my daughter but it's it's i love the fact that the program does that and can you can use it in that in that way as well we might chat afterwards about that as well because oh, yeah. get at her yeah. school down here um yeah yeah, yeah so that's a oh, second yeah. program generation pound yep. um yep. and the newest program that they've uh just released is called pound unplugged and Pound Unplugged is a 30-minute uh, program that's really focused on mental well-being, uh, but it's also created to give people the most bang for their buck. So everything that you need within a 30-minute period, it is a rock and a reset. So we have yep. uh, two parts rock, so high intensity, get the sweat on, get the energy out. And then the last part of the class is a reset, uh, so we bring things down lo-fi and we actually do rhythmic breathing. Uh, so different breath practices uh, to work with the nervous system calming down and then guided meditation uh, as well. So, yeah. That's so cool. The whole package, within 30 minutes, you're getting the yin, the yang, the high intensity and the mindfulness. Uh, and, yeah, it leaves you feeling really like, Ooh, I just refilled my cup. <laughs> like, Brilliant. I like that, especially this day and age where everyone reckons they're time poor or poor in general. Well, it, this is why it was it was kind of created because that's become much more evident in the last few years. Uh, yes, you know, uh, a lot of men, there's a lot of mental health focus around yep. in the past few years, of course. So we pound really wanted to 
be caring about that, but then also taking into consideration that people sometimes don't come to class because they don't feel like they have enough time and they don't, yeah. you know, there's a lot going on in life and, you know, there's financial crises and like everyone's attention is elsewhere. Uh, so yes. if we can give them everything they need in just 30 minutes, maybe it's going to be achievable for them. Yep. Uh, and yep. yeah, the re response from it has just been wonderful because I think there is a more need for that mindfulness portion of things in yeah. life at the moment. And uh, yeah. yeah, you know, looking after yourself, a little more self-care rather than always yep. being go, go, go and supporting that fight and flight system in the body. Um, yeah, they're trying to pound it using ways to kind of uh, bring everyone back into harmony within. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's so nice to hear. That's that's fantastic. For for instructors, what is there? Is the training a one day course? Is it a two day course? Give us a little bit of information about what instructors would uh, would experience and and training. It does it does depend. So uh, all the trainings can be one day. Uh, if it's live, if it's a live training, it'll be one day, eight hours. If it's yep. a virtual online training. Uh, it can either be over split over two days or just one day of eight hours. Yep. There's no prerequisite for doing any pound training. So you can join any of the three programs to become an instructor. Uh, yep. And we give you like everything that you need and the support that you need to, to start that journey. Um, yep. Yeah, there's in, on our, so to teach pound, you need to be a, an official registered pound instructor or pound in plug right. instructor, which, yep. whichever program you're teaching. And we have an on, online platform uh, for instructors with all the choreography, but also a whole heap of support and upskilling. So we have an education center in our online platform. So when you do a training, it's not like you just do your training and that's it, you're on your own. It's like you've got constant support in there. We have master classes and workshops on different, sometimes on ways of teaching and sometimes it's just on uh, something else like uh, understanding your purpose or yep. something yep. Uh, helpful on the journey of instructor. It's really, really in supportive space. Brilliant. So if I'm an instructor, I just wanted to get this right. Do I need to have Cert 3? Do I need to have a gel? I don't need to have, wow. Okay. Okay. You've got me. You've got me. I mean, I've got my surgery. I've got my, you know, I've done all that kind of stuff. I like the fact that the program doesn't, doesn't require you to actually have. No, it's really a sincere, uh, there is a very sincere, genuine desire to get the program out to the people who need it most. Yeah. So the way that they offer it for people to teach is to make it available as yep. available as it can be. Uh, so instructors do need to register, be a licensed instructor. So they do pay a, a, a fee to access the choreography and, and the yep. license. Yep. Uh, but going on from there, they can teach the program anywhere they want. There's no venue fees. There's no license. There's no license fee for a club as such. So the instructor holds a license, so to speak. The instructor's yep. paying for access take, to everything. You can take pound wherever your imagination will allow. And that's one of my favorite things to say in Pound is you are only limited by your imagination. Your imagination. Yeah. When it comes to the people that walk up to you, if they've got physical limitations or other disabilities, you're only going to be limited by your imagination. For me, everyone is welcome in my class. We'll find a way to make it work. Yep. Uh, and then as far as a venue goes as well, you're only limited by your imagination. If there's a space and you want to try a Pound class, do it. Yeah. Now, is the music, while we're on that, my brain's going to go 100 miles an hour here. I can sense it. It's like I've had a coffee or something. Um, music licensing. Is it is it original music? Is it cover music? It is original music. Okay. Yeah, it is original music because the, the program is so music-based. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it, you want to feel like you are in a fitness rock concert. That is the goal, to be yep. able to unleash it in a rock star uh, to, but it's not just about what we listen to. It's about honoring the artists as yep. well. Yep. So there's a big thing about oh, honoring, nice honoring the original artists and yeah. um, celebrating their amazing music. Yeah. 
No, yeah. I, I, I'll be honest, since I haven't taught now in, in uh, five, six years, it's been now six years. Uh. Um, but the last places that I was teaching at in Canberra before we moved back here to Wollongong, uh, I'd only teach in places that played, allowed us to do original music because I just couldn't handle doing a pink song sung by a bloke or, you know, a Foo Fighters <laughs> sung, sung by a chick. It was just like, no, I get the yeah. industry did it. I understand all that kind of stuff. But to me, you know what? No, guys, we need to pay our artists what it is. You know, there's yeah, music, I have, music I mean, is I have, the biggest part of what I we do. I have been asked if I can use covers before and I'm like, oh, my playlist is there with like, Lincoln yep. Park or Rage Against the Machine on it, and yep. I'm like, I don't. Think work. <laughs> Could you imagine a, yeah. a Lincoln Park song done, sung yeah. by? Like, no, sorry, no, it just can't. It can't be yeah, done. Yeah, we do have a lot of music that you probably won't find in any other fitness class, uh, yep. just because of that rock element. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's good fun. Uh, so as an instructor, you need to make sure you're teaching at a licensed venue, a venue that pays a license fee, yes, a one or music license fee. Or you pay your own, and, and yeah. um, but the music is all given to you in your yep. license. So you download yep. it from uh, what we call the label, which is okay. the online platform. Now, is that is that a monthly fee? Is it a quarterly fee? Is it a yearly it's fee? A, How does that? You can work? do monthly, or you can save and do save a bit and do a yearly. Uh, okay, and how? How much is it per year? Oh, sorry, how much is it per month is what I was trying to ask then. So twenty nine ninety five US dollars a month yep. or you yep. pay two ninety nine for the year and get two months free. Brilliant. And what's training costs? How much does training cost you to do? I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> That's okay. We'll have it in the show notes. <laughs> I will say because I'm, I'm teaching a training uh, on the 19th of August, a virtual yep. training uh, for the regular pound program. Yes. And I believe the price is at three thirty eight right okay. now. Yep. Um, US dollars. It would yep. be US dollars. Yep. And uh, but there's always ways to get a little discount code either from yep. me. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> or pound are offering uh, often offering something to help instructors get yeah. get on their way. Yep. Um, yeah. This is the Group X podcast. So how often would training be held in Australia? Like how often have you been doing or, or are you doing training for instructors here at the moment? So virtual trainings are kind of running every couple of months. Yep. Um, but the live trainings haven't really kicked back into gear. Um, I, I don't want to say since COVID because we did have some live trainings a couple of years ago, but yep. I think last year, 2022 was a bit of a challenging year for a lot of people yep. and the live trainings kind of haven't made their comeback since that time, yep. but they will. <laughs> as, a, as a trainer presenter, are you, are you, do you, which do you prefer online or live face to face? Oh, I love a live training because yep. I love human connection i yeah. mean you do have human connection like we are having right now but yes. it's just yep. something a little bit extra special when it's live yep. so yeah i i do appreciate though that like in a virtual setting you can connect with people so the trainings i teach are open to the whole world yep. so if you if you join a a pound training online there's a good chance you'll be training with people from the usa oh, from wow. Asia, uh like all in the same melting pot and it's okay. really kind of amazing to be able to connect in that way that it would never have happened uh in the past yep. so found a, a very supportive of teaching virtual yep. and taking things online because of the way the world went yep. they wanted to make sure uh that the communities were supported to still get yeah. their rock on and make some noise in a time that really, really needed it as well. So I'm going to probably ask a silly question here, but hey, that's Tony and Tony asked silly questions. Yeah. I've just gone to third person. Good, good one, dickhead. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, if I decided to, to, to sign up for your training that's happening in August, yeah, do I get sent my own sticks? You do, isn't that exciting? <laughs> no, I know no, no, that probably sounded really silly to ask, but at the same time, um, yeah, I, there's little things like that that I get excited about, and I know that there are instructors out there that do as well. If I'm going to be doing training, as an example, if I'm doing an online um, cycle program, you're not going to send me a bike. 
Yeah, so I'm going to have to go and find that myself. So my brain was thinking there, okay, are you going to, going to send me these sticks or do I need to go to a music shop and actually get my own drumsticks? Oh, How no. is it go with yeah, that? No. So, so, so these sticks, you would be sent a pair for training yep. and um, they are specifically designed for pound. Yep. Uh, they are made to mimic a real drumstick. But if you pound with a real drumstick, it will probably break right. within yeah. three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so pound, pound uh, our rip sticks. They're called rip sticks. Yep. Um, I like to say they're sticks that get you ripped. Yep. Love that. <laughs> um, they are made of a very, very durable plastic. Okay? okay. So they're very strong and they can take a nice hard, hard beating in a pound class. Yep. Uh, but yep. they're also made to kind of mimic the sound of a drumstick. So they sound similar. They're just a little bit uh, fatter and a little bit longer, so that um, for to be designed for the workout. For the workout, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can yeah. you do a class without the sticks? As an example, if if the club's only got twenty sets and and I've rocked up and I'm number twenty one, am I still going to get a good workout, or am I going to be missing the main part of the workout? <laughs> oh, that would be really sad. I would... I would, I would want to give you my yeah. I, hope that, I hope that never happens. <laughs> I mean, look, I would never say no to anyone coming into yep. my class for pound yep. because there is, there are other benefits. Yes. Yes. So the greatest benefit, of course, is getting to unleash your inner rock star. Yep. But I mean, these are also great instruments yep. on the ends of our arms, our hands, yep. Yep. Uh, which can be used uh, to do the same movements. And um, you can definitely still get the workout on the physical aspect uh, and just being a part of the music and the people and the community is you'll still get those benefits. You'll still get the benefits, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you could come to class even if you don't have your risk. Excellent. Thanks. I'm coming. This is the Group X Podcast. You know what? The, what you sent me the video before, just before we started. Yeah, and I jumped on it, I clicked on it, I had a look. The look on people's faces when they're doing it, they forget what's going on around them. They're connecting with you, but they're also connecting with the people around them. And when I say connecting, you can see that look in the eye with someone that's doing the same thing that they're doing. And that comes through on a video, yeah? The, the video really showed the enthusiasm that the members or the participants actually have and doing it. And that's, that's infectious. Uh Infectious is the word we use. <laughs> the class is infectious. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's so different. So when they, that's biggest comment, I guess, afterwards, it yep. was so different and that's what people need and that's what people want. They want to shake it up. They're looking, uh, you know, we have new programs come out, but everything's a little bit similar to something else. Yep. Pound is just kind of like standalone, this, yeah. this program that is unlike anything else, which has benefits, which probably because of the amount of benefit for the mind, it's outweighing everything else yep. uh, because, yeah, get people feeling good in their mind and then they're going to be off doing all the things that you offer. And <laughs> yeah. how, many, how many releases uh, do you guys put out a year? Uh, so every month we release three new tracks doesn't okay. quite work like uh, Les Mills with quarterly releases um, yep. in Pound. We, it's, it's good to, for participants to feel comfortable yep. and successful. So as an instructor, we find that fine line between comfort, uh, it being too easy and, yep. and sorry, feeling successful and it yes. being too hard. Yep. So finding that balance between when it comes to even changing the tracks. So you always want to have some things in there that people know yes. as well as bringing in something new. So yep. every month we have three new tracks, um, but that track library for instructors never expires. So when you become a pound yep. instructor, you access everything that is on there. Everything. Oh, wow. On so there. I can sign up today and I can get access to anything that you've done from inception. All the things that are still online. Yeah. 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 Cool. Because yeah. there's like music licensing things. They're yes. offering the music. Yeah. So sometimes uh, tracks uh, do disappear yeah. um, due to things like that. Yeah. Or, or maybe just because they become outdated. Yeah. But in general, yeah, you've got well over 200 uh, songs to choose from. And, uh, now, 
on that as well, here I told you my brain to go crazy with some questions once it finally kicked into gear properly. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I, I feel like I had some. <laughs> no, the, 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 how do I access my music? Is it on an app or is it something that I download and stick on in iTunes and it's on my device? How does that work? So uh, when you log in as an instructor, you've got that option to download it to your device. Yep. Uh, so like a computer. Yep. Um, but also the songs are not, uh, they're popular songs and they haven't been altered. So oh, yeah. if you okay. use Apple Music or Spotify or something, you can just yep. create your playlist in there as well. Okay, so it's the same. It wouldn't be like a, as an example, most songs these days I find are around three to three and a half minutes long. It wouldn't be a track done, but oh no, we've turned that into a six minute track. No. No, no, no. so it's exactly it as you would find it on. Wow. See, that that I like as well. That that I think is is clever, very clever, yeah. knowing that you've you've got access to those songs, but the song is what the song is. The song yeah, is as the, as, as the artist intended it to be not actually something that Tony's gone well no actually I need to stop it here at three minutes and five seconds add in from one minute 25 to three minutes and five again and gonna make a, a full four and a half minute track yeah no yeah. no there's none of that it's like a, like I mentioned before it's about making there having as little as possible obstacles yep uh, for the program the same when if you want to teach all the programs like the we were talking about the registration the license fee for instructors if you yep. take on an additional program they're not going to charge you in a whole another additional it's like only an extra five dollars yep. to access all that choreography all stuff. so to try and make it as simple as possible with minimal obstacles so that it can get out there to people and we can yep. help create a happier world through yep. Pounding it out. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> how many how many instructors do you think there'd be in Australia at the moment? I'm not entirely sure in Australia, but I like I know globally there's over twenty five thousand instructors. Wow. But I, I Australia I'm not really sure because it constantly changes. changes. Yeah. A lot of them are in contact with me and then it's like, Oh, I'm taking a break, oh I'm back, I'm taking a yep. break. What um it's been the obstacle here, like it would be amazing to see Pound showing up in so many more places and people teaching it in schools for kids and uh, yeah, communities, like their own community or in the gym. Um, but I find that like uh, with the gyms, it's a bit of a like, well, there's no instructors out there for instructors. It's a bit like, well, there's nowhere to teach it. So yep. it's like a... It's been a bit of a circle of that going on yep. for a while. Yep. Um, but the beauty of the program is that you can teach it anywhere. So uh, when I came back to Australia, no one knew what Pound was and I just went for it. Yep. And I uh, hired a room and I started teaching classes. I offered free classes to begin with, but then I started to build up a community. Some of those yep. people still do Pound with me today. Uh, yeah, it's and and then the words started to get out, and that's we used to have uh, very very busy trainings prior to um, all the <laughs> well craziness. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do think it was just because of those people like myself who just went for it. Yeah. Uh, but that's like anything in life. If you want to make it work, you've just got to really go give for it. it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't I think as I sort of mentioned there a little bit ago that I, I believe that it's a program and you've opened my eyes up to it as well. And I'm not just saying that because I'm, I'm chatting to you about it. You, the, the program sounds like it, it's, uh, it needs to be everywhere. And I think the potentially, as you just said, you just alluded to then, the, the instructors, if instructors can teach it anywhere, they don't need a club, doesn't need a license to do it. You know, I'd say to instructors, if you're over or if you're falling out of love with the programs you've been teaching, look for other programs, look for something else to go and train in. And this is a program that you can get in there and create your own following, your own whatever it may be, and be something that's totally different to every other program that we see in classes, in, 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 in gyms yeah. these days. You know, I think it's, it's, I'll say to instructors, guys, jump onto the training, go and have a look at it, suss it out, you know, do your research and see exactly what it is and see if it works for you. You know, I think from just chatting to you now for what has been an hour and a bit, um, <laughs> you've, you've got me ready to go and do the training 
to yeah. actually turn around and go, okay, let's let's do this, let's turn this around because oh, it's a good training. It's fun. Uh, it's like and there's good like solid information. It's fitness. Yeah. I have to say that the I will mention the biggest misconception is that this is a dance program. Yep. And people steer away from it because they're not they don't like dancing. Yep. This is a program for everybody. There is no dancing. I danced all my life. <laughs> This is not a dance class, yeah. I can assure you. If anyone would know, it would be me. There's no can-can? Um, no, there's no can-can. But the, there is a connection to music which exists in dancing as well. Yeah. And it's like, it's so good for us, for you know our well-being to create that connection with music. In other programs, yeah, we connect with the music, but nothing like becoming the music, like you are physically making the music with yep. those uh, drumsticks as you as you exercise. It's like, there's nothing like it. It's, it's, I've been saying a joke every time in my classes lately because I just get this unstoppable energy come over me. Yep. It is almost like I have 10 cups of coffee. Like I'm <laughs> huge in and Hello. I've been saying, I've, I, I don't know what's going on guys. It's like I've yep. had 10 cups of coffee, but it's actually just pound yep. because of all the release of all those yes. chemicals and feel good hormones is just uh, amplified like nothing else i gotta suss it out i gotta find one down here in wollongong somewhere if anyone oh. knows one please reach out let me know because i will yeah. go and and uh yeah pay a casual visit and do a class if not clubs in wollongong watch out tony may <laughs> go and do a training here soon you never know <laughs> yeah Diane, thank you so much for coming on and having a chat with me and, and giving us a, an understanding on what Pound is all about. I've honestly enjoyed the last hour and a bit of chatting to you and understanding yeah. what it all is. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having me and like for helping uh, get the word out there about this rock out workout. <laughs> I, hope that it, I hope that it will help uh, encourage some people to to come and try classes uh, just just for themselves yep. or to um, uh, become instructors because yeah it really is it really can be life-changing if you allow allow it to be I've just seen it happen too many times it, yep. for the good that it brings into people's life um, and also if it's not something that's accessible for you and you just want to do classes pound also have a online platform for participants awesome so awesome. pound backstage uh, yep. For anyone that wants to start pounding and they don't have any classes near them, they can get online and do it. <laughs> Love it. Guys, jump onto the Group X website as well because there is a page on there under uh, education that will be there for Pound and have as much info as I can put on there, but we'll also lead you through to the Pound website as well. So, yeah, Diane, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>